The next program is to check whether a given number is prime or not. This is a very common program usually asked in technical interviews or in examinations. The program has multiple logics but it is essential to write optimum code so that your program executes faster. So in this program we are going to ensure that the program executes with the minimum number of iterations. Also notice that we are going to use one special function which is exit which basically terminates the program whenever program controller reaches this point. In order to use exit function we are required to add one more header file which is stdlib.h. This file contains a definition for this program. So in order to call it, we are required to include this file. Also notice that we are providing a parameter as zero to this function. It is just to denote that program is executed successfully. A non-zero value is basically will tell compiler that there was some error during the execution. Now, what is a prime number? We call a number as prime number when that number is divisible by one or itself. So we know that all the numbers are divisible by one. So if you want to check six, then six is divisible by two and three. So six is not a prime number. However, if we check seven, seven is not divisible by any other number than one or seven. Hence, seven is a prime number. So let us discuss logic for this program now. By now you have simply understood that if you want to check whether the number is divisible or not, we just need to divide that number starting from two till that number. And whenever any number between this range divides your original number, that means the number is not prime. So if your program is 10, which is to be checked, then your loops should be from two till nine. And also if your number is 13, then your loops will be starting from two till 12. But we can optimize this program because the maximum number which can divide your given number will be half of this range. For example, if we consider 10 as an example, then we are going to check whether 10 is divisible by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then half of the range is this point. So no number beyond 5 can technically divide 10. So if this number is n, then we need to divide 10 by the half range. So end point for this range will be n divided by 2. So in our case, it will be 10 divided by 2, which will be 5. So our iterations will start from 2 and it will go till 5. Suppose user has entered n as 24, then our loops will be from 2 till 12. So that is how we have optimized this program. We have reduced number of iterations by half. Now let us see how we can write program for this. I'm using i for iterating variable which will be used in my loop and n is the number that user is going to print so here are two important statements we are asking user to enter a number and the number will be stored at the address location of n then here is our loop i'm initializing i to 2 and our condition for the loop will be i less than or equal to n by 2 why n by 2 i have already explained it over here and then we are going to increment i by 1 using i plus plus and then inside of loop we are checking whether n is divisible by current value of i so we are using modulus operator. So if the number is completely divisible, then modulus operator will give us result as zero. If the number is divisible by any number from the range, then obviously number is not prime. If any number divides n, then there is no need of checking further. So we'll simply terminate the program using exit function because if we assume number to be six, then six is divisible by two and three. But if six is divisible by two, and of course c modulus two is equal to zero so there is no need of checking six modulus three is equal to zero or not so if any number divides n then we know that number is not prime and we will exit our program but from the given range none of the number divides n then this code block will never get executed and once your for loop completes that is when all the numbers try dividing n and they fail to divide it with the remainder zero then we can say that number is prime so let us try to understand and this program with i as index and n as our given number assuming user has given six then in the first iteration i will be initialized to two and then the condition will be checked so condition is two less than or equal to six divided by two which is three so condition is two less than or equal to three which is a true condition so controller will move into for loop and the divisions will be checked so n is six so six modulus current value of i which is equal to 2. So 6 modulus 2, that is a true condition. So controller will go inside of if statement, it will print it is not a prime number and program will end. Now let us check the execution with n as 7. 
assuming that user has entered 7 so our loops again will be from 2 so i is initialized to 2 and the condition will be checked as 2 less than or equal to 7 divided by 2 because these are integer so condition is evaluated as 7 less than or equal to 3 so this is a true condition so controller will move inside of the for loop and it will check for the division so it will check for 7 modulus 2 which is not equal to 0 as 7 modulus 2 is equal to 1 so condition does not get satisfied so this if block will be skipped and then value of i will be incremented to 3 then the condition will be checked as 7 modulus 3 which is again 1 which is not 0 again statement which are inside of if block are skipped and then i will be incremented to 4 but condition for 4 will not be true because we are checking 4 less than or equal to n by 2 that is 7 by 2 and we have checked it over here it is 3 so condition is 4 less than or equal to 3 which is a false condition hence the for loop will get terminated and compiler will print that it is a prime number and that will complete your program.